Hello, everyone. Hi. In our Ask Jehovah's Witnesses questions, last time we were musing on the Gospel of John, and John 17 specifically, where we, we learn by just reading it in the New World Translation that even though their text, their famous proof text says, I have made your name known twice in chapter 17, when you look in the context you find in the entire upper room discourse of some five chapters, no tetragrammaton. Mm -hmm. That would be a surprise to a Jehovah's Witness. Not even in their Bible. Not in their Bible. That's right. Mm -hmm. Forty-nine times, however, you have Jesus referring to God as Father, and a handful of other times as God. Surely those statistics are significant. But we did promise at the end of the last video on John 17 to discuss the five occasions when the name is intruded into the New World Translation. So we just want to look briefly at those and then start to examine the context starting with John chapter 1. So the first reference is in John 1 23. Mm -hmm. okay. I, I think you should explain the intruded as the, the reason that we say intruded is because it's not in the original. That's right. Thanks for explaining that. <laughs> okay. It's not in the Greek text, so why do we say that they've inserted it or intruded it? It's because they have no textual justification for doing what they do. So why do they do it? We'll get more into that as we go through the individual context. Mm -hmm. So 123 is the first reference in the New World Translation. He said, I am a voice of someone crying in the wilderness. Make the way of Jehovah straight, just as Isaiah the prophet said. And the next one is in chapter 6, verse 45. It is written in the prophets, and they will all be taught by Jehovah. Everyone that has heard from the Father and has learned comes to me. And then the final three references in John are all in one chapter, chapter 12, starting at verse 13. Uh, okay, uh, Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took the branches of palm trees, and went out to meet him. And they began to shout, Save, we pray you. Blessed is he that comes in Jehovah's name, even the King of Israel. And then twice more in one verse, that is 12 verse 38. So that, okay, I'm just going to read a little ahead. I did that the last time too, to make sense of this. <laughs> uh, they were not putting faith in him, so that the word of Isaiah the prophet was fulfilled, which he said, Jehovah, who has put faith in the thing heard by us. And as for the arm of Jehovah, to whom has been to whom has it been revealed so I think you can get a sense of why they do it yeah they're quoting from Old Testament they feel justified where quotations are directly taken from the Old Testament that's mm -hmm. the usual procedure but that's not the only one so we'll start to examine the context of these five references starting with chapter 1 now chapter 1 of course is probably at least the first 18 verses are probably the most influential verses in the entire New Testament when it comes to understanding who God is and who Jesus is and the exclusive claims of Christianity. So we want to read all of it to just get the flow before we get to verse 23 where the name occurs. But let's read the first 18 verses first in the New World Translation. We'll look at some cross-references in the, both the Silver Sword version of it and the ESV. Okay. In the beginning, the Word was, and the Word was with God, and the Word was a God. This one was in the beginning with God. All things came into existence through Him, and apart from Him, not even one thing came into existence. What has come into existence by means of Him was life and the life was the light of men. And the light is shining in the darkness, but the darkness has not overpowered it. 
There arose a man that was sent forth as a representative of God. His name was John. This man came for a witness in order to bear witness about the light that people of all sorts might believe through him. He was not that light, but he was meant to bear witness about that light. The true light that gives light to every sort of man was about to come into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into existence through him, but the world did not know him. He came to his own home, but his own people did not take him in. However, as many as did receive him, to them he gave authority to become God's children, because they were exercising faith in his name. And they were born not from blood, or from a fleshly will, or from man's will, but from God. So the word became flesh and resided among them. And we had a view of his glory. A glory... Was sorry. that among them or among us? Oh, among us. Did I say them? Excuse me. I'll reread. So the word became flesh and resided among us. And we had a view of his glory. A glory such as belongs to an only begotten son from a father. And he was full of undeserved kindness and truth. John bore witness about him. Yes, he actually cried out. This was the one who said it, saying, The one coming behind me has advanced in front of me, because he existed before me. For we all received from out of his fullness, even undeserved kindness upon undeserved kindness, because the law was given through Moses, the undeserved kindness and the truth came to be through Jesus Christ. No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten God, who is in the bosom position with the Father, is the one that has explained him. There are a few differences. In verse 1, you have, again, what was it at the very start? In the beginning the Word was, and the Word was with God, and the Word was a God. They have changed the order. Uh, they've got now in the Silver Sword, in the beginning was the Word, which is more in conformity with other translations. Okay. And then in verse 15, I hadn't noticed this change. How does it read again in the old one? John bore witness about him. Yes, he actually cried out. This was the one who said it saying, The one coming behind me has advanced in front of me. The new, the new translation says, This was the one of whom I said. Not the one who said it. This is the one of whom I okay. said, The one coming behind me has advanced in front of me, for he existed before me. Mm -hmm. And perhaps the most important one of these would be verse 18. You have, again, No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten God who is in the bosom position with the Father, is the one that has explained him. Well, they still have the only begotten God, but they have got now, again in conformity to many other modern translations, the one who is at the Father's side, which is actually what the ESV translates it. That other yeah. translations say in the uh, closest to the heart of the Father, mm. or the, literally in the bosom position, as the footnote acknowledges. Mm -hmm. But the designations of God here, so starting at the beginning, mm -hmm. you have two references to God as God in the first two verses, right? Mm -hmm. But you also have one reference to the, the, word, word, as the word as God. God. Then in verse 6, there came a man who was sent as a representative of God. His name was John. Mm -hmm. And then in verse 12, however, to all who did receive him, he gave authority to become God's children. Mm -hmm. That's the fourth reference to, to God as God. And then in verse 13, and they were born not from blood or from a fleshly will or from man's will, but from God. Mm -hmm. Five. But when it says in verse 
14, I think there's a difference that we need to note between the New World Translation, and I see it's still the same in the new one, the new version. Mm -hmm. The glory such as belongs to an only begotten Son from a Father, and he was full of divine favor. That's another change. Truth. It was undeserved kindness. And undeserved kindness and truth, yeah. So they've made a father and son here comparative. It's it's a metaphor with earthly fathers and sons, right? Other Bibles tend to favor the capital. So the ESV renders it, the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glorious of the only son from the father, full of grace mm -hmm. and truth. So I, I think the Watchtower yeah. justifies their version of this by saying, well, the, the articles are not there. But that's not decisive. Well, I think the expression only begotten that they have in theirs seems to give it mm. away, though, that we're not talking about just a son born to his dad and having his glory. He looks like my like my child. This is the only begotten. Mm -hmm. So, so this would only... be, in, in most translations, then this reference to the son would be the first reference to the son, right? Mm -hmm. In here. So, yeah, that means that there's there's five references to God so far, and then in verses, verse 18 is the last reference that I can count. No man has seen God at any time. So now we have six references to God as God, mm -hmm. but then we have the only begotten God, a second reference to Christ, although he's not called Christ up until this verse 17, is he? Mm -hmm. The second reference to Christ as God in the first 18 verses. Mm -hmm. So what has Christ been called so far? Well, he was called the Word, the Word. three times in the first two verses. And Son. Or, I should say in the first verse he was called yeah. Word twice. And, I'm sorry, again, three times in the first verse he's called the Word, right? Mm -hmm. And then a fourth time in verse 14 the Incarnation text. So the Word became flesh and resided among us. Mm -hmm. And we had a view of His glory, a glory such as belongs to an only begotten, the only begotten Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. So the first time that we get Jesus Christ, named mm -hmm. Jesus Christ, is in verse 17. The law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came to be through Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So the titles that are given to Christ, the Word, the Son, the Only Begotten, mm -hmm. and and this is the most outrageous one from the standpoint of a Jehovah's Witness, God, Only Begotten God, mm -hmm. which you can justify from the text. Other translations do that too, or some say the Only Son. Mm -hmm. Some say the Only God. That's the new translation, the ESV says, no one has ever seen God, the Only God who was at the Father's side, has made him known. Wow. And in the Silver Sword, did they do the same with the, the the New World, the older one, in that part? The only begotten God, okay. who was at the Father's side. So, I think when you're a Jehovah's Witness, you certainly, well, you don't pay a lot of attention to these verses at all, except maybe verse 1 to argue mm -hmm. the Trinity with Trinitarians. Mm -hmm. And verse 18, I think maybe your your yeah. go-to proof text for, well, we can't we can't believe that Jesus could have been God because no one can see God. Well, mm -hmm. it doesn't say that. It says no man, no man has seen God. So here's where I think at some point we should link to the, to the ones we've already done from Genesis where it's plainly said in Genesis that men have seen God. Mm -hmm. we're, we're talking in the sense of the fullness of his glory. The fullness of his glory. And here you have John's explanation of how, how can those two facts fit together. Mm -hmm. His glory is seen in the Son, in the Incarnation. Mm -hmm. It's not the same thing. The word glory or Shekinah in the Old Testament, that's the yeah. summary word. It's not actually in the Old Testament. God the concept of God's glory is, is his full glory. That is his manifest glory. His shining some yeah. want to render yeah. it so it's to accommodate to our limitations yeah you know, that seems to be the reason that these two texts which seem so paradoxical no man has seen God mm -hmm. and Exodus says no man can see God mm 
But we're told here that his glory was made manifest in a human being mm -hmm. who was a true human being but yet was still the only begotten God in the bosom of the Father. Mm -hmm. Begotten, not made. We made the point of that. So six references to God as God, two references to the Father as God, references to the Son to the Word, to Jesus Christ in verse 17, mm -hmm. but no tetragram. Mm -hmm. So that starts to develop the context of the intrusion of the tetragram in verse 23. So in the next segment we'll deal with the actual context because who says the tetragram out loud? I don't think I don't think we're aware of that if we're reading it that you have John the Baptist quoting from the Old Testament out loud in front of the religious critics of both John and Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And as we've said in several other videos about, let's say, this, the trial of Jesus before the Sanhedrin, that brings up a whole bunch of issues of, would you get away with it? Yeah. Why wasn't John uh, stoned or accused of, of anything? Yeah. So in the next segment, we'll look at the, 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 the immediate context of the one time that, that they managed to get the name Jehovah into the text in John chapter 1.